Hi everyone, Devereaux here. Thanks for tuning in to watch my Materialize How-To videos. In this video we're going to discuss how to drive the Materialize effect from a blueprint. So let's get started. There's a couple ways we can do this. I'm going to start out with creating it through a blueprint. I'm going to do it um, a little bit different than maybe what you guys have seen before. So uh, just to recap, we have a Materialize effect already applied to the table that we picked out from a previous video. And here is our Materialize amount. We can go ahead and go all the way down to zero and back up to one to drive it. So in essence, we just want to have a driver to go from zero to one to do our effect. So we can accomplish this with the timeline. So we're going to do that through the blueprint. I'll go ahead and close this out. And what we want to do is on the static mesh, I want to go ahead and create a blueprint. So I'll go over here to the details panel and click blueprint add script. So I'll click that. It actually creates a blueprint actor from that uh, and it creates automatic static mesh component to it. So it's really a nice way to quickly prototype something. Uh, let's go ahead and change my naming convention to BP for blueprint underscore table round static mesh. Sounds good to me. And then we go, we have it up here. And what I want to do first is let's open it up to our event graph. And then uh, at the very beginning, we want to create a, a pointer to our material instance to, to the driver so we can actually set that scalar parameter from zero to one. So let's do that on the event begin play. So once we start on begin play, we want to uh, create a uh, dynamic material create dynamic material on the static mesh component. There we go. And I like to stack my variables on top of the boxes. Uh, and then we want to do a uh, our material MI, our material that we created before, round materialize. And for now, this material only has one um, UV on it. So if you can look at the static mesh component, you see that this static mesh that's assigned to it only has element zero. If there's actually more elements, you'll see element zero, one, two, three. So for this example, we only have one element to uh, to, to mess around with. If you had more, you uh, duplicate this with an array of elements or with multiple uh, variables pointing at each element index. So it's however you want to do it for your game. So for now, we'll just do it with one and we'll go ahead and feed this into it. And what we want to do is uh, save this as a pointer so we can always uh, manipulate the data to it later during runtime. So at this point, we want to promote this to a variable and we will call this um, uh, mi uh, table, material instance to the table. All right, so now we have our materialized instance saved. Uh, what we want to do now is uh, create a driver uh, using a curve. So the best way to do that in Blueprints is by timeline. So we'll want to go ahead and do a timeline. And a timeline and add timeline. And we'll call this materialize timeline. And we'll open this up. And then what we need to do is add a new float track because it's a scalar parameter from 0 to 1. So we'll do a new float track. We'll call this materialize out. All right, so in the beginning, we just right click and add a key and we'll about one second, we'll add another key here. We'll click on it so we can get exactly zero. And then this one, we'll click on this one and exactly one. And we'll go ahead and frame the curve around it by using these two buttons. Um, and it helps if I use actually value one also. So now we have just basic uh, ramp, linear ramp. You could change this to whatever curve value one you could uh, create, make it auto. Uh, if you right click on it and make it auto, it says curved. Uh, or you can keep it linear. I'm going to keep it linear for now, just for for usage. Uh, you can add multiple points to it. You can actually make a loop. You can do all kinds of anything you want it to do to drive the uh, zero to one range for customized effects, customized looks. So there you go. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, the other important thing is, is this is five seconds so I can set this down to uh, one second. That's if you want to do a loop. So let's say if we want to do auto play and auto loop. Uh, you can do that too. Uh, we won't do that for here. So we'll save, go back to the event graph. And now what we need to do is go ahead and play this. Um, so now since we've set this, I will go ahead and hit play. Well, now you can make this a separate function and call this whenever you want to start it. We could go down that path, but it's however you, you want to set this up at this point forward. It's just the idea and you can be done many different ways. So once we uh, do that, we want to go ahead and get our reference here get and we want to set a seller uh, set a scalar parameter 
there we go. Now that's the actual material that we want to set. So during this timeline update, we'll want to set that value, materialize out. And what we need to do is set our parameter name, which is, if you remember previously, if you go to this, we have all our parameters here. And underneath this specific one we want, we want to change is the materialize amount. Now, can you, can you change some of these other parameters real time? Yes, you can. You can build a uh, parameter drive, some specific things like the color. Maybe that's something you want to change over time if it's a longer type of effect. But uh, for now, we're just going to get the materialize uh, amount. And uh, go ahead and copy that. And then paste it. Oh, well, that doesn't work that way. So I guess I'll type it manually. Materialize amount. And there you have it. So basically, once we start the level, theoretically, what this should do is create a material instance and apply it to that model. Uh, we save a point or two, and then we start the timeline to drive that parameter from zero to one for the first second. So for the first second of starting the map, we should see the table warp up. So let's see if that works correctly. So we'll go ahead and hit play. And then, yep, that's what happened. I'll go ahead and exit out, start it again you see the table warped up from zero to one. So that was pretty awesome. If I wanted to do it reverse, we could just easily do the same thing. We could uh, modify the timeline. Let's say we want to make this um, zero and make the, the top one one. So now it's going from one down, so it should uh, dematerialize. Save that, and let's go ahead and do play and see if it should dematerialize. There you go. So that's one way you can to control that effect. Really easy to control that effect. You can do all kinds of different curves, any kind of um, any kind of effect you can think of for uh, easing in, easing out. Maybe it has several different loops in and out, in and out. You can do all kinds of weird things. Uh, but that's the basic use of getting the material set up. Uh, you can also do the same thing if you went to like um, Open Level Blueprint. You go in there and create a. That's what I did for the. Um, this uh, example room, you create your own timeline in the, uh, the the blueprint itself. If you don't want to actually create a blueprint of the model, or you can actually do the exact same code that I showed you for this own blueprint for um, a different blueprint. So if you're talking to it from a different blueprint, so however you feel you want to implement it, the talking to it's the same. You drive it with the timeline with a set scalar parameter, and uh, that's pretty much it. So. Again, this is through Blueprints. You could also do the same idea through C++. Uh, if you have any questions or have any comments, feel free to leave your message below. Uh, if you like uh, the videos, uh, let me know. Also, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.